So we're going to talk about networking. This is the Noob Hour, where we introduce concepts from a very simple point of view so that, that you can learn more. So uh, this is a picture of the of a reasonable portion of the internet. Every line you see is a connection between two computers. And this sort of blown up part has something called IP addresses in it. And I'll talk more about what IP addresses are later. Um, and here's the attribution. This is a uh, released under the creative, one of the Creative Commons licenses that says that if I use this image, I can use it, no problem, but I have to attribute it. So okay, so there it is. There's the attribution. Um, kind of a pretty picture. So I thought I would start with what you probably see at home. So when you when you access the internet at home, internet comes in via some sort of wire, and usually the first thing have first thing at the wall is something like a modem, a cable modem. If you have a, a cable service, then cable modem. That just allows you to connect to the internet. You can't connect directly to that with your other computers. Although sometimes the internet service will give you a modem that does lots more than just be a modem. So the, the next thing that has to happen is you need something called a router. The router translates between or, or, or forwards information between two different networks. So you have a network in your house. The, you have your tablet, your phone, your TV, printers, computers, whatever it is that you have networked. And some things are wireless and some things are wired, perhaps. These devices can all talk to each other in this network, but they can't talk to the internet directly. They have to go through this, this router because we segregate things into different networks. So these are two different networks you're looking at here, one in the internet and one in your house. Maybe this will all make sense better soon. Um, a lot of times the wireless switch, the router, and the wired switch are all part of the same box. Fairly often they are, or usually the, the router switches are one thing and your modem is another thing. We call this a LAN, local area network. So whenever you hear someone say LAN, that's what they're talking about. So the local area network is the network in your house. Some people um, will call it an HAN, a home area network, but it's usually just a LAN. It uses only private IP addresses, and here's that word IP address again, which I will discuss in more detail soon. And here are some examples of IP addresses that are private, but let's move on. Uh, some terminology. Network is a set of computers or devices that can exchange data. It's also the hardware over which they exchange data and a little bit of both, and Wikipedia has a very lengthy discussion of what all that means. Router provides an interface between two networks, so it forwards information from one network to another and back again. A switch adds connectivity in your network, and for those of you who, this is, this is an important thing to know, you can't have a loop in your switch or everything will stop working. So for instance, a switch over that, that blue thing is a switch, um, and if you took one of those network cables and you plug both ends of it into the switch, now you would have a loop and everything would stop working. Private network is not accessible by the internet, and that's like your home network, or the network at Frida is, is not accessible by the internet. The internet is the global con connection of computers, and the World Wide Web is sort of something on top of that. It's the collection of inter information that is accessible via URL. URL means Uniform Resource Locator, and it sort of this is more than just a URL. This is a URI that I have uh, showing here. The URL sort of ends at the question mark. But the first thing in, in a URL is, is the scheme. So HTTP means um, you, you want um, hypertext transfer protocol or something, you something like that. Anyway, so you're using hypertext to move around, which is what the World Wide Web is. Um, so that's A is the schema protocol. B is the host. So this is. Um, Actually, C points to that 80. I, I got those two words off. Um, and I copied this from another presentation. Over the host is blackham.org. In this case, it's a web server that I help to keep going. Um, and the port, which is optional 80, and the port is um, usually emitted. You usually don't see it. But when you come to a computer, and you, there are different things you might ask a computer to do. And one of the ways computers determine 
how to respond to another computer is they use this notion of ports. It's kind of whenever you call a company and they say, you know, press one for sales and two for technical support and three for whatever, ports are kind of like that. You come to the computer and you say, I want port 80, and it says, oh, you want the web. Yeah, sure, and it gives you an, an internet, a web address page or web page. Uh, path to the resource. Um, so at your website, you know, you may want the home page or you may want some other page. This is, you know, this is where the computer is and this is what you want off of the computer. If you don't have anything, it just gives you whatever defaults. Um, the question mark means we're about to start a, a query. Um, and the query string is uh, this um, here. I, it says condensed equals something chemical that I'm not going to explain. That is something that isn't really part of the URL. It is part of the, what's called the URI, but it's passed on to the computer. So at port 80, it just serves web pages, but that in your computer may do other stuff on the in the background. And so if your computer is going to do other stuff, and it's going to show up after that question mark, you might see stuff like this um, on sites where you um, buy things, commercial transactions or what have you. So you're sending information to something in the background. Uh, yeah. So anyway, URI is Uniform Resource Identifier, and this whole thing is a URI, and you can learn way more about that on uh, the internet. Curious. Okay, so computers find each other by this thing called IP address, and um, it's a series of numbers. We'll talk more about it in a moment. A series of numbers. It's like your home address. You know, I want I want to visit Lachelle. Where does Lachelle live? She lives at this address on this street, and what have you. But uh, computers just use a little series of numbers. And because numbers are hard to remember, this whole the whole internet thing kind of came. Or that's not why. But a bit, there's now um, you have on top of that these names that are easier for humans to remember, like freeipfs.org, much easier to remember. And you have computers out on the internet that are DNS servers, domain name system servers. And what they do is they translate a name to an address. So if you type freeitathens.org into your computer's URL browser, it, the first thing it does is it goes off to another computer and it says, hey, someone wants this thing called freeitathens.org, give me the IP address. And that remote computer sends back the IP address and says, oh, it's over here. And then your computer's actually going to the IP address, but it's just leaving the, the name there for you so it's easy for you to understand. So the computer must have the IP address to connect. So if you cannot get to a DNS server, if you can't find this server that can translate, your computer can't get anywhere and you'll get, you know, it'll just wind, so you'll never be able to get to the other computer. So that's the only way that the computers can connect to each other. So a little more about IP addresses. Um, IPv4, Internet Protocol version 4, is the form that most of you will have seen if you have seen any at all. And it is four numbers that are separated by dots. So 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 this happens to be a domain name server that you can use to make this translation. Um, the numbers go from 0 to 255. So this can say, each one of these four numbers can be anything from 0 to 255, so that's 256 total numbers that can go between the dots. Anyway, IP addresses start from 0 to 255 in the IPv4 form. I'll talk about IPv6 in a couple of slides. Most IP addresses are public that you see, like this 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 .8. There's a public IP address, but there are some that are reserved for private use only. And here are the, these are the addresses. Um, addresses starting with 10.0.0.0 and ending at 10.255.255.255. That is a private address range. If you try to get onto the internet using this address, all the computers out there will just ignore you because they know that this is a private range. So if you're on the public internet, you'll just get ignored. Your router won't let you go out with that IP address. It'll only stay in a private network. Here's another range. Um, this last range is probably the one that, this last range and the first range, those two are the ranges that people most likely will see in their home uh, networking. Uh, if you were to go in and, and look at this sort of thing. How does your computer get an IP address? Because your computer has to have an IP address to talk to others. There are two different ways. You either have a static IP address or a dynamic one. So if it's static, your computer has a permanent address assigned. The address to that computer never changes unless you go in and change it manually. The other option is something called uh, DHCP dynamic. You get 
dynamic IP address, and this is what most of you do. So whenever you connect to the wireless at Frida, the router at Frida gives your phone a dynamic IP address that's only good for the time that you're there at Frida. And then when you go home and you connect to the wireless, your router at your house gives your phone another, or your phone, if you're only connecting to your network, they give you, again, you, your phone's got an IP address that's been given to you by your internet service provider. Okay, so these are all dynamically allocated um, IP addresses. So your router usually at home, your router is usually the thing that's giving out these IP addresses dynamically. So it's dynamic if another computer gives you, you know, your computer boots up and says, I need an IP address and some other computer gives it. That's dynamic. If your computer has it stored internally in a file, this is my IP address, that's static. Okay? So at, at home, you usually use dynamic. Um, in order for something to get to a computer, though, you have to have a public static IP address for anything to be accessed on the internet. So you, because the domain name server has to know this IP address goes to this address, you know, freeitfins.org goes to this address. It has to be static. It has to not change. Anyway, oh yeah, IPv4 versus IPv6. So version 4 versus version 6. IP version 4 is out of public addresses. And they ran out because there are more than 4.3 billion computers connected to the internet. They have no more public IP addresses in IPv4. This is 256 times 256 times 256 times 256 is that number. Or 2 to the power of 32 is this number depending on how you have represented the IP address. IPv6 looks different but it has lots more addresses and so they've now instituted, you know, a lot of, you, you might begin to see these IPv6 addresses and same function. It does the same thing essentially. It's just a, a longer. So here, it's like your zip code with that little dash. It's the zip code with the little dash. Yeah, it, yeah. It, but it's kind of like that, except that you don't use an IPv4 and append something. You get just the whole new set of numbers. Anyway, the there are two to the power of 128 IP addresses with IPv6, which is 3.4 times 10 to the 38, which is a lot. Um, that's a big number. Anyway, this is an example of an IP address in hexadecimal. If you have the number 256, it means two one hundreds plus five tens plus six ones, right? You're, and those are in powers of 10. 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 100 is 10 squared, 10 to the 1 is 10. Here, you're counting in units or blocks of 16. That's what hexadecimal means. Six hexa six decimal 10, 16. And so this 2001 doesn't mean 2001, that's an entirely different number. If you translated that from the hexadecimal to decimal, you would get, it's, a, it's a different number altogether. Anyway, um, Frida's network. This is a simplified version of Frida's network, uh, in case anyone is curious. And so the internet, um, again, comes in and there's a cable modem. And Frida has a router and a wireless switch, and it uses uh, a, another wired switch. And you're, um, I have lines going to the tablet and the phone, but they sort of disappear. I don't know what happened to them. Anyway, um, the wireless goes to tablet and phone and probably printer. The wired switch usually goes to most of the computers and the printer. Those are all on the local private network 192.168.1. something. Okay, something between, actually between 1 and 254, for reasons I will not explain. Um, the machine that you use, if you're on a refurb station and you're, you, you know, you just get the operating system installed automatically, if you've been here a while, you've seen that happen, they have a little red bar and it happens and then suddenly there's an operating system. There's a computer in the next room called Caprica, and Caprica, um, has Clonezilla, those of you who know Battlestar Galactica will understand, so there are lots of clones, right? Anyway, so Caprica um, is a computer that serves, that, that it's a server that pushes out those images that are being written to the hard drive. Because we don't want people to walk into Frida and get their telephones or computers automatically re-imaged, <laughs> Caprica has two Ethernet cards. One of them hooks to the wired switch, and one of them goes to another wire switch that's a private network of just the refurbishing station. So if you go onto the wireless, 
you are not connected to this network. Or if you set, if you connect to this tech support station here, you're not in the refurbishing network. Only computers that are attached to the network switches in the refurbishing network. And that network happens to have numbers 192.168.100. something. And Caprica, by the way, remember a router is an interface between two different networks. Caprica is also a router because Caprica has to get, if, it, if these computers, if you're going to get on the internet with these computers to prove that they work and things are going right, then the only way for these computers to get the internet is to go through Caprica. So Caprica is also a router that then pushes information from these computers up to this router, which pushes information up to the internet, and it comes back, goes through the router, back through Caprica, and down to the computers. So, and by the way, whenever you access something on the internet, you don't go just to one computer, you go through a bunch of computers to get to whatever, usually a bunch of computers. And there, there are ways to figure that out as well. There are lots of little tools that network administrators use. Anyway, um, questions about Frida or this network? All right, some common types of networks that you may hear about. Personal area network, that is the network of stuff that you, your, your tablet and cell phone and laptop, you know, the, the network that, you, like your hotspot is a personal area network, right? So, okay. Essentially, right? Um, LAN is a local area network. Uh, sometimes they, it gets more specific. You see HANs, not very often home network, home area network. SAN storage area network, you may have a computer that only just has storage and other computers access it to get files and information off of it. WLAN, wireless LAN, you see that often enough. W WLAN is the wireless LAN. Wide area network, WAN, that is the rest of the internet or the next level up, you know, from your internet service provider. Some of you might encounter something called a VPN, that's a virtual private network. Usually employers do this. What you do is it's it's a virtual network. It's not really real, but it allows a computer outside of a network to behave as if it's inside the network. So your employer will do that so that you can be at some meeting in another state, but you can get to the internal network at your employer employment, and it's secure. You don't, they don't have to open up all their computers to the whole network just to let you in and, and see the stuff on the inside, right? This is whole talk by itself, so just some common terms. HTTPS is a secure version of HTTP, and it encrypts the traffic both ways. The website has to have a certificate, um, which certificate will make more sense in a couple of bullet points down when I'm talking about PGP. SSH you might see. Uh, secure shell, this is a, a way, an, another way to encrypt both ways. You can have two computers, and they connect to each other via SSH, and everything they send back and forth is encrypted. So even if someone gets the data, you know, someone's tapping in the middle, a man in the middle type thing, they can't make sense of it because it's all encrypted. Um, or they could, but it would take a lot of time to encrypt it. Um, PGP, by the way, has not gotten the support that I might have liked for it to get probably because it's hard to use, but this is something that individuals can use. It's called pretty good privacy. You get a public and private key pair. You publish your public key anywhere anyone can see it. You keep your private key secure just for yourself. People use the public key to encrypt messages to you. And then they send the message to you, but only you can decrypt it. Your private key decrypts it. The public key encrypts it. All right, so you can use this for um, secure communication just between individuals. Um, and it's, that's another talk all by itself. One last thing, open wireless movement is something that we're going to have in a new hour coming up soon. Um, and so the idea is for um, people to everywhere provide a little open wireless network just that anyone can come and use. And since Frida is, is uh, its mission is to make technology available to everyone, you know, they're they're discussing, starting to discuss whether or not they want to join this open wireless movement and make a wireless network just available without having to give a password. Now there would still be a, a, a wireless network that's just inside Frida that you have to have a password for, but there would be one external that anyone can. Actually, uh, most, so there's, here. here's a, um, 
a terminal. This is the way I interact with computers the most, is I have a little square and lots of words in the square, and, and this is called a, a terminal. Um, I'm going to just open a new one. And probably most of that sort of dark network stuff happens via an interface like this, because this interface, once you know what you're doing, it can be a lot faster than having to sort of point and click around. And it's also, you don't need graphics, you don't need anything special, you just have to have something that makes text. And that's a lot more likely. But uh, anyway, so I wanted to show this. This is something called Wireshark, and it's been capturing uh, information over the, the network that this computer that I'm presenting on is attached to. And this is the sort of things that computers do. They say, hey, this is the, here's the switch, Netgear switch. This is that switch, that blue switch right over there. And, and in this particular, that particular line, it's saying, some computer named 192.168.0.239 is looking for a computer named 192.168.0.254 and saying, who has, who has this address? Please tell this computer because this computer wants to know. Here's another one um, who has, that's Caprica and computer with an IP address, that IP address is looking for Caprica. Um, there's another one, uh, 13 happens to be the computer I'm presenting on right now. So ARP is a, a something request protocol, I can't remember what it stands for. But this is, you're sort of looking right now at the chatter between computers. This is what it looks like. It just, it, it's um, lots of little text information and messages. And even when you're not doing anything, there's something on the internet saying, hey, who's out there? Hi, my name is, you know, 192.168. Blah, blah, blah. Who else is there? You know. So um, here, DHCP. There is a um, that that's the Caprica here is that's Caprica's IP address, giving uh, acknowledging that the, this computer can stay as number thirteen. Um, I don't know what LN LLMNR stands for. I have no idea. Here are a couple of IPv6 addresses. So these this is these are IPv4. These are IPv6. Um, other I don't I don't know what all this is. I don't know. Pretend that I do, but, but this is the sort of chatter. Um, now, NTP is network time protocol, so there's a computer trying to figure out, you know, trying to sync up and make sure its time is correct. That's not, that's what, so let me, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to ping um, 8.8.8.8, .8 which is like it's a DNS server. Yeah, so it's 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 where computers go to find out, like, what does freeitathens.org? I need the number. I don't need freeitathens.org. So the domain name server is the computer that it goes to to say, what's the number associated with this name? The human gave me a name. I need a number. So I'm, I'm using a ping. Like, if you look here, you see ICMP. That's ICMP is a protocol that's uh, commonly called a ping. And all that does is it says, Hey, are you there? And the computer says, Yes, I'm here. Hey, are you there? Yes, I'm here. And that's just going on over and over. So for every computer in here, between the computer that I'm on right now, giving this presentation, and I'm going, and it's going out through Caprica and through the router and out to the internet, and it is pinging this computer 8.8.8. Oh, I see. Okay. So there's, and, and it's giving me the time in transit. It took, you know, 36 milliseconds or 12.7 milli milliseconds. All right. I'm going to quit, quit doing that because it's be probably annoying to have someone constantly poking me for no good reason. Um, anyway, and, and of course, there was still other tr other stuff going on on the internet at the same time. Ping is one of the ways that, um, that's the type of network attack is you just, they just ping the computer constantly. There's, um, so it's sort of a type of denial of service. So uh, you, you may have heard of denial of service or DDoS, DDoS attacks, maybe. No? Okay. Well, one of the ways that, com that computers get attacked is you get a whole bunch of computers all at once to access one computer. And it just, it just clogs everything up. And so, uh, you know what? It happens. Remember the internet, just like the whole internet all over the world just went down for a while a few weeks back? You guys remember this? Like it was, or it was I, really I slow. Lots of big websites yeah. were really hard to I get to. Yeah, it was probably better Yeah, that was. That's what it was. It was distributed denial of service, and they were they were targeting. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Chugalug starts. Oh, I don't know. Chugalug Classic Hackers UGA Linux Users Group uh, starts at eight fifteen, and we'll talk more about network networking. So th these sorts of higher level. Uh, conversations are the kind of thing for 
what Chugalog is sort of about. Or it can be really simple too, it doesn't matter, but we try not to go too high with freedom. So I, I'm going to I'm going to end this recording first um, because we don't, I don't want to record all of Chugalog too. Uh,